Abi Sabat, and thanks so much for joining us today for our lesson discussion. Today we are having a unique uh, discussion. We are having a family or rather a home lesson discussion. Uh, joining me today, I am with my brother and friend, Elder Jovin. Jovin, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, thank you very much, Elder Brian. As you have said, it is a unique one and a home-based uh, lesson discussion. Uh, so I am Elder Jovin Odiambo, and I'm so much glad to join you this morning. May we study together. May we learn the word of God together. Thank you so much, Elder Jovin. I'm Elder Brandon Yango, uh, one of the elders of Kusta Church. Uh, before we start our today discussion, I want us to you to join us in singing a wonderful song that is based on our key text of today. And the song is SDA Imnol number 366, Oh, Where Are the Reapers? That garner in the sheaves of good from the fields of sin. We see cause of truth must the work be done, and no one may rest till the harvest home. Where are the reapers who will come and share in the glory of the harvest home? Oh, who will help us to garner in the sheaves of good from the fields of sin? The fields all are ripening far and wide. The world now is waiting the highest tide. But reapers are few and the work is great. And much will be lost should the harvest wait. Where are the reapers who will come and share in the glory of the harvest home? Oh, who will help us to garner in the sheaves of good from the fields of sin? So come with your seed, receive sons of men, and gather together the golden grain. Toil all till the work of the harvest come, then share ye his joy in the harvest home. Where are the reapers for oh, who will come and share in the glory of the harvest home? Oh, who will help us to garner in the sheaves of good from the feasts of sin? Let us pray. Our Father God, God in heaven, thank you for this wonderful Sabbath. It is a time, Lord Father, that we are going to learn your truths, Lord Father, and to share them with thy brethren, Lord. We pray that your glory may tabernacle with us even as we start till we end. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Jovin. I remember we are still on our interesting lesson, making friends for Jesus, making friends for Christ. And today I can say that we are getting, to, we are getting into the epitome of this, uh, this, of this lesson, or rather of this quarter, an exciting way to get involved. There are so many ways you can get involved in making friends for Jesus. Uh, uh, we can preach, we can sing to, 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 to uh, um, take the gospel to the world, but there's one way that we, today we want to dwell more deep in, and it's a very exciting way. Even the lesson writer have the ending as an exciting way to get involved. So my brother, could you read for us the key text of today? That is Matthew 9, 37 and 38. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, uh, sorry, 9, verse 37 and verse 38. Uh, the Bible records that then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Thank you so much. So it's a call upon us. Christ says the harvest is indeed plentiful, but the laborers are few. Are you a laborer? 
am I a laborer? Is my brother here a laborer? That's what we want to get to understand today. And how can we become effective as laborers in this work that we are doing uh, together with Christ? And uh, lesson writer says that there's a strength in numbers. What I can I do alone, many people, when they come together and do, can be much greater in great magnitude than what I can do alone. They say that umoja ne? Umoja ni nguvu. Na? <laughs> Unity is strength and uh, singleness is division. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> so, uh, being coming together even for Christ to work is nguvu. When people come together, you can even see this very evident when you go out for the mission, in, in the mission field rather. When we go there in a group, uh, we go into the vis visitation, people get get the morale, you know. People uh, get rejuvenated. People get rejuvenated, yes. yeah. So <laughs> maybe if if I, I know uh, we go there out there and someone have a health a message in a team, we have a health speaker. When someone uh, needs to be encouraged in a uh, in a team, we find someone with scripture ready uh, uh, to 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 encourage the the, the person. Uh, you can find another person who know how to sympathize with people. You know, people are not the same. Yeah. So when we have all these different talents being uh, brought together. They form a team, and those are, these are the units that are today we want to dis discuss about more the small groups. And that is uh, basically what is commonly known as unity in diversity. We are diverse, but together we are united. Thank you so much. Yeah. And and my uh, brother, do you think that this unity is is only God only expect us to have this unity if they them they say them him and the, the, the son and those people are not united? It will not be. Uh, of sense. In fact, uh, it wouldn't even be of any example to us that the Godhead was not uh, united. Therefore, if they were not united, then there was no way us as the children, as the sons whom they want to save would be united. Thank you so much. Indeed, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is united. They form the first small group yeah. ministry because they work together. Yeah? The, 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 the mystery of how the, the three entities work together and they form one thing is indeed is a mystery beyond our comprehension. But what we know that they are the first small group and they work together uh, even to uh, for enable for, uh, for us for our own uh, salvation. So uh, uh, without let's let, let's get into this. Let's get into this and, and have a candid uh, discussion. Can you tell us something about God first? Uh, God idea first uh, about the, the, the small group. Yes, you, you have introduced this very well, that now, uh, because the Godhead is united, and uh, we, we just want you to understand that the unity that is there in, in the Godhead is for the purpose of salvation. God is united together, that uh, together the mankind may be saved from the ruin of sin. And that's why we are saying that it was God's idea first. And uh, do you know what uh, one man uh, formally say that uh, the small group's idea is not just a good idea. It is a God idea. That means that it originated from God. And now let us see if it originated from God. What uh, what does the Bible say about it? Let us look uh, uh, quickly at Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 has a wonderful introduction to the most wonderful book that is the Bible. What does Genesis say? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible records, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Thank you very much. That is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. And now let us turn to the book of Hebrews also, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, and see, uh, unite this together and see the unity that is there again. The book Hebrews, the Bible records, Hebrews, I'm reading Hebrews 1, uh, verses 1 and 2. The translation is uh, New King James Version. A God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken to us by a son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom all, through whom also he made the worlds. Uh, thank you very much. So here, number one from uh, Genesis chapter 1, Verse 1 and 2, the, the Bible introduces unto us, uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And it goes ahead to tell us of how the Spirit of the Lord was hovering upon uh, the surface of, uh, of the deep. And then when you turn to, uh, uh, to Hebrews, it has the very, very same uh, information. 
So here we see during the creation, the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything that was therein. It's the very first place that we find a united uh, people. And this unity was the, for the first for the purpose of uh, creation. And when you see this, uh, the, lesson, the lesson commentator is again turning our attention uh, to our father being the master designer. That is the great architect. And uh, he carried out his plans through Jesus Christ. And the active agent uh, in creation in, uh, in, uh, during that creation time was uh, Jesus Christ in unison with the Holy Spirit. And that was uh, a, such a, super, a supernatural act uh, that is an example unto us this day. What does it try to teach us? It tells us that as God's people, number one, we must get united for the sake of the work that is there for, uh, for us. And as we are learning today, one of the most exciting ways to do this is through the small group. And now uh, Ellen G. White brings to our perspective, and he, called, he says that the plan of salvation had its uh, first council, uh, uh, had it, uh, in its place uh, the councils of the uh, it, uh, of the infinite from all eternity. And he goes, uh, she goes ahead to say that this was uh, typically the very first small group uh, that was formed. So when we talk about small group, what do we mean? From the name small groups, Elder, from yes. the name small group, uh, I think this is something that is self-explanatory. Yes. A small so is big. small. It's not it's something big. that is big. <laughs> so it is a small group of people. And uh, the very first example that we find is uh, the Godhead, the three united together for the sake of salvation of mankind. And so uh, as we see this, this was a small group for the sake of creation and also for the sake of redemption. But to us, we know very well uh, that the small groups may have uh, various purposes uh, in the Christian life and also in the Christian work. So let us build deeply into the scriptures. Thanks so much. Yeah. Just try something there, Elder, yeah. before we, we, we move forward. Yeah. There's something in Genesis 1, 26. Yes. And the Bible records, then God said, let us make man in our... If I write these two words, let us, yeah. and then make man in, in our... our. You know, God, God is not me. Yeah, very yeah. true. <laughs> in our God, the Father, God the Father is not me. Yeah. See, in our own image, yeah? let us, which means there they, they is not only one person, yeah. there are three, there and they're three. working together. Our wish that we could work together, we the, could way, work the way together. God, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are working together yeah. for our own salvation. Yeah. So, even even as we, we, we move, we transition to the next uh, uh, section, yeah. uh, small groups in, 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 in scripture. Is this thing based in scripture? Or are we just talking about a bit from, sure. from Blue? Because we know very well that as Adventists, our key or the main, uh, what, how do we always say it? Sola, uh, Sola Scriptura. Sola Scriptura. <laughs> it is our, 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 our main driving uh, theme or focus. Yeah. It is always Bible and Bible, <laughs> Bible alone. alone. So let us build deeply into the scriptures and understand it. If this is a biblical concept, or it is just a concept of some individuals who came up and wrote a lesson <laughs> study. <laughs> Thank you very much. And and if you come from Luanyanza, where I come from, do yeah. you say Adwen Supra God West? Yes, God West. <laughs> <laughs> Can you move with me to Exodus 18? Exodus yeah. 18, the verses uh, 21 up to up to 25. <clears throat> Exodus. Want, uh, Exodus 18, yes. 21 to 25. You want to see where... Uh, uh, Jethro, you know, Jethro is the is the father-in-law to, to Moses, to Moses. Yeah. and this is one of the uh, uh, I can say very very nice uh, uh, father-in-law. Yeah. You know, uh, and coming to, to yeah, coming to uh, advise uh, Moses. Yeah. Oh, I wish one day we have uh, this kind of father's in law <laughs> Let's see what Jethro is is telling uh, is telling Moses uh, in 18, 21, 25. 21, 25. Yeah, just before you read, you read that, let yes. me build it up. It is a time that Moses could spend a lot. The, almost the entire day sitting as the judge of Israel. Yes. So the work was, was was so tedious. So when Jethro came in with, with Zipporah and, and, and they found how Moses was struggling, judging Israel from morning to evening. Yeah. And Jethro goes uh, ask, go ahead and ask uh, uh, Moses, what is wrong with him? Why can't you delegate? <laughs> can, can, can you read? Can you read? Okay. Uh, uh, Exodus chapter 18, verse 21 to 25. The Bible records that moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God. You need to take note of that. Such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, 
and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Verse 22, yes. and let them judge the people at all times, then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. So it will be easier for you, for they will bear the burden with you. If you do this thing and God so, uh, so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people will also go their place in peace. Verse 24, so Moses heeded the voice of his father in law and did all that he had said. Thank you so much. So in this text, we are finding some, uh, let's say three things here. Yeah. One, we see delegation. We find, we find, uh, we find the, the power of delegation. Two, we find a power of, of uh, we find, uh, we see attitude of a good leadership in that uh, uh, not what bringing all at uh, 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 wanting to to take care of everything. Yeah. As in, you don't trust in, in other people. Yeah. And the last bit of it, we see the 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 the, the, the effect of mentorship. So when uh, Jethro saw um, uh, Moses struggling, he told him what to do, and Moses gladly uh, understood and he did this and. He, he delegated, he grouped uh, people in, uh, in, in cocoons uh, of tens, uh, 500s, and so on, yeah. and then uh, then uh, picked one person to lead these groups. And there are attributes that the Bible has records of these people. And can you just remind us that you Some of these attributes. Number one, such men must be men who fear God. Fear God, one. They must be men of truth. Truth. And they must also hate covetousness. And these yes. are the men who are to be placed over 500s. 50s, 10s, so, yeah. so on. So uh, we, uh, we, can, we can see how this work uh, uh, came out and was done much effectively. So Moses could have time to do other stuff. So people could manage this, these ends of the groups, could manage these groups on the small issues. But issues that are, are huge or as some uh, doctrinal uh, uh, controversies, yeah. Moses could handle. Could handle and them. I like that even in our church today. We have delegation of duties. We have elders, we have head of departments, we have the general conference, we have uh, uh, directors and all these pre presidents of the of the conference. Could you imagine that <laughs> as of now, Ted Wilson was the only, was person, the only person in charge of the Seventh day Adventist. Yeah. Everything is in the uh, an how, how could the work be done? It will be so tedious, tedious. and uh, it will not go according to God's plan because God's work must be done with order and that is always the main driving force. Thank you so much. When that means that even in the church, we should just continue delegating this thing to the small group, and that's where the church is going. We're not just saying that that oh this we can say oh this thing came from Old Testament that was a long time ago. Okay, it came from Old Testament. If you're not a fan of Old Testament, you have to be a fan of the Bible. Then let's me move move with you to the to, to New Test New Testament and get it now from Christ Himself. Look, book is Luke six twelve and thirteen. And because well, there if, if you are with me, you can read Matthew 10, 11, and also Mark 3, 13, 15. But for the sake of us, we're going to only read Luke, Luke 6, chapter 6, verse 12, 12 and 13. And 13. Let's uh, emulate what Christ did. Yeah, the, the Bible records uh, uh, that uh, now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself. And from them, he chose 12, whom he also named apostles. Thank you so much. Could you just imagine for a second that Christ went, uh, or, or we call it one man later, one went man. solo. <laughs> and he one came, man army. One man army. He <laughs> came, <laughs> preached, teach for three and a half years, and went to heaven. What could be the, the fate of, of Christianity? In the first case, we could not have Christianity. Because no, there will be, Christ could have not left anyone to proceed with his steps, to proceed with his teachings that in this we, we also find three things we find mentorship we find delegation and also we find good leadership christ bring these disciples together as a small group the inner circle you know uh, 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 they say that teach one person teach the entire world like you teach one person the person will teach another person the person will teach another 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 another, 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 another uh, person and this gospel will continue as, as spreading so we also learn from this that Christ, through his disciples, he gave us a blueprint of what uh, of what uh, small groups mean. And if you look keenly, you can you will realize that even the number of the of the small groups is also being determined. Yeah, we have twelve, and many scholars and those who have read a lot on human behavior and and, and psychology, 
they say is that <laughs> this the uh, a group of six to twelve that is a, the group that can work best uh beyond twelve there's not a group there's a crowd <laughs> it's a crowd and it becomes yeah. so hard to manage it's so hard to manage and you can you, know, you can even see this one in mission we go to the mission take, take 15 people they that go for visitation. <laughs> my friend, they will story and then they will forget and even move past the home they, yeah, they, they were going. And to. you know, in fact, uh, some houses cannot even accommodate that fifteen. And you know, this famous uh, old man said that Panya Wengi Shimo. And you know, by the way, elder, in the case of Christ, you will see a very perfect example of Christ. Even as we move to the next part, uh, number one, you will find out that Christ never just chose anyone. He never just chose anybody. One, he chose very influential men, the kinds of sons of Zebedee. These were known as the sons of thunder. These were just from the word thunder. They were they were not they were no men, no joke men. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, 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 the the reason for this was that Christ was taking influential people who could after him after he had left could again influence other people. And one thing you need in you learn in Christ is that Christ never concentrated so much in uh, in teaching the people. He never concentrated so much in teaching people, but he invested this all in the twelve. And once he had invested in the twelve, now all these twelve people could now go out and bring a greater effect. Take for example, Christ in his uh, in his uh, earthly mission and the success that he had. Now just one person, Peter. Peter, Peter giving a one-time sermon which converts 3,000 people. And not only that, look for, for, for the other very many disciples. The work that they did was so much great. That's why the, the small group idea is not just a good idea. It is a God idea for the sake of the work. Powerful. Yeah. Powerful. Now, even as we move ahead, and now we look uh, more deeply at this, Take example of this. Uh, we are people who have studied biology and done everything. We have various uh, things in our body. We have the cell, we have the tissues, we have the organs. We have, the we, we have <laughs> <laughs> teeth is not under uh, <laughs> body organization. It is uh, a part of the body. Uh, the smallest uh, part of the body, we call them the organelles. The organelles will come together and form the cells. The cells will come together and they will form the tissues. The tissue will in turn form the organs, and then these organs will now form the complex being, and that is uh, the body of the human being. Let us read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18 and 19. The book is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18 to 19. Even as we look unto that, and uh, what we are studying, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18 and 19. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 18 and 19. 18 and 19 the Bible records, uh, But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? Sure. If they were all one member, where would the body be? What, what, does this, what is this trying to tell us? We have one large church, but this one large church cannot in itself go to perform all the work that is required for the mission. Each and every person must be united. And you bring this input, another person adds this input, another person brings his input so that the work of God can continue simultaneously and smoothly. Uh, and the main thing that we are trying to get here is that, one, we are members who are from different origins and different backgrounds, but we are being brought together to be united. Just the same same way, the teeth cannot say that uh, it, it, it does most of the work in the body. Now uh, it, begin, it, it begins complaining. If it does that, the toe itself again will begin and there will be no unity in the body. Another example, when the head uh, uh, hurts or the, you have a headache, you realize that the whole body suffers. And that is what Christ is trying to drive our attention to. We, number one, we need to be so much un united in the work of God. And number two, we need to work harmoniously. And once we do this, we will do it for the sake of God. When we read, when we read um, one, one, uh, one of the uh, Ellen G. White's uh, references books, uh, and this is uh, something that I love so much, uh, it is the Testimonies uh, to the Church, uh, Volume 1, 
the, the page uh, the page is 21 and page 22 uh, she says that the formation of small uh, companies as a basis of Christian effort is something that has been shown to him by one who cannot err and this one who cannot err is God himself it is something that was brought to him and it is it is being formed as a basis of Christian effort and you know what the basis of Christian effort is it becomes in the second part of that uh, 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 that part uh, that uh, quotation he says that uh, people or where there are many they are being to be divided into smaller companies they are to be divided into smaller companies and these smaller companies at work for the benefit of the church number one they are to work for the benefit of unbelievers those who have not yet known Christ and lastly they are to work for the benefit of those who have backslidden once this is done and they are united where uh, uh, one would have been one by the church being uh, going as one we will find out that we are be, we are we are at position of bringing 100 more if a group of three goes for another person a group of three goes for another person a group of three gets united for another person where where a, a, a one man work could have been done at one time we will have done a 100 man work at the same time and the same uh, um, the same uh, uh, level of uh, opportunity and that is what God wants us to be and so small group uh, ministry is something that has been ordained by God and it has been ordained to enable each church member to grow it has been uh, ordained to enable each church member to enrich himself spiritually and in so doing we shall be making friends for God. Thanks so much. That, that is powerful Elder. And that one uh, brings my mind, reminds me of a fictional story that we read I think if not in primary school maybe somewhere where we had this this fiction that uh, a guy uh, the, the food started complaining that you know I've been working all, all day and, and I don't get, get the food and today I'm not going to work. And the ad will say that you know that that food we are searching is me who is uh, uh, collecting it together. Today I, I I refuse, and then every part refused. And the, in the long end, they they started to all suffer. The food started growing thin, the ants growing thin, and then this is when they realize that they need they need, they need each other. They need each other. They need each other. And and Paul uh, in First Corinthians is also reminding us is something critical in verses twenty two, that no, no no much no much rather. Those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think, and I what we think, to be less honorable, uh, uh, on this on these we bestow great honor, and our un, un, unpresentable parts have greater uh, modesty. It is something very common nowadays, uh, even in churches today, and it's a very bad habit, that uh, people group, you know, the group people, if somebody asks you, what is the spirituality of, of that person? As if you have a spi spiritual matter. <laughs> spiritual matter. <laughs> <laughs> to gain someone a spiritual a, a level. And the group, you know, how many watumishi, this is just church goers. And, you know, Bible records that each member, even the ones that we think, we think are, are less honorable, they form a part of our small group. They form a part of the ministry, they form a greater part of the needs of presenting the gospel at, across at the, the, uh, the globe. And it will be something very painful to us that uh, uh, us, uh, or those who deem their, their self to be very spiritually strong, on that day, you, you view you view those who you thought were less honorable, yeah. them uh, in the New Jerusalem, and we were burning in hell. He said that, <laughs> uh, Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's dwell more. And, and and understand the New Testament as small groups. Yeah. Christ had a small group. We have seen the Old Testament, uh, Jethro convinced or, or, or uh, rather advising Moses to create small groups, manage Israel easily. Christ followed the same principle. And our main core is the unity of the Trinity. Those are a small group. But in what about, what about uh, the disciples? After Christ left, did the, did, did the small groups uh, uh, die? What did they do? Uh, let's reflect on Acts 18, 1 to 5. Uh, Elder, you can help us read that. Yeah, uh, the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1 to 5. This is the Acts of the Apostles. It records that after the things, after these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, 
born in Pontus, who uh, recently come from Italy uh, with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. So because he was uh, of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked for by occupation, they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. And then verse 5, when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. And let's just leave alone that story. I want us just, just to, to, get, to learn something from the story. In that small text, between one to five, how many names have, you, have, been, have been mentioned there? Yeah, I've seen, uh, uh, I've seen <laughs> the name of uh, Silas. I've seen the name of Timothy. I've also seen a Jew named Aquila. And I've also seen a Claudius. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what does it bring into your mind? Was Paul working alone? He was not working alone. He was not working In alone. fact, we are being told that they were tent makers. It means that there was something that occupation that they were involved in, apart from the work of God, they were uh, also uh, united commonly in doing something to earn a living. A living. Yeah. And that also made, made point us even uh, today. Even even if you were creating the small group, you say, "Oh, me, oh, I'm a doctor. How will I? How will I, I be in the small group uh, with people doing this and and that?" If 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 you cannot be with them. Then find doctors for a small group. If you're an engineer, find my fellow engineers. Yeah. It will even be much, much easier for yeah. you to form a, form a small group of that caliber. If you're working in your workplace, form a small group with your workers that you can spend time with you to study the word, uh, the word of God. The way Paul did. Let's let's also check in verses uh, chapter is twenty, verses one to four, and I'll read. The same the book of Acts. Yeah. That after the uproar had ceased, Paul called the disciples to himself, embraced them, and departed to to go to Macedonia. Now when he had gone over that region and encountered them with many words, he came to Greece and stayed three months. And when the Jews plotted against him, as he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return uh, through uh, uh, Macedonia. And a Sopata of Berea accompanied him to Asia. Also Ari Aristarchus and Secunda Secundus of the Thessalonians and Gaius of Debe and Timothy and Decius and the so many. <laughs> So Paul was working with a group. He followed the footsteps of Christ. He was mentoring the likes of Timothy, uh, the uh, uh, the like of of uh, Gaius, and and these guys that he was moving uh, with. You know, even being, uh, I think, for example, uh, not for example, if, uh, imagine just Paul was preaching alone, walking all these countries alone. Emotionally, it would be uh, uh, destroyed sure. because it was uh, someone who was, was being chased from here to there. Uh, there was a lot of temptation. People were resisting, especially the Jews were resisting him totally. It is a verse Paul says that I've, I've given up. Let me now go and preach to the Gentiles. Yeah. And God, God uh, tells him that verse. I think uh, uh, and you I'm, know, I'm forgetting, but I'll find it. I still look for that verse. You know, one one specific thing that God is trying to teach us as His children is that when we come together, I usually see this advert. When we come together. Great things happen. Uh, the, the, what God is trying to teach us here is that Paul remember the history of Paul. You look at the likes of Timothy, and he also had some of his friends like the, the John Mark. These were people who had various uh, problems and testimonies in life that they could share. And once they shared this, they were to encourage each other. What is this trying to tell us? The small group is also a place where we as a people. We share our own testimonies. And when we share our own testimonies, we encourage one another. And through uh, encouraging one another, you find that a friend is strengthened and he grows in faith, becomes strong. And this strength is what is reflected in Acts chapter 15, verse 39 to 41. This strength that they received from sharing their personal testimonies and what Jesus was able to do to them and was also able to do through them enabled the gospel now to move swiftly to various places that uh, the gospel couldn't have moved had they been working independently. So God wants us to join together, to come together, encourage one another, and then move to, uh, move ahead even as he leads the way for us. Thank, th thanks so much, Elder. Just in terms of time, I'm not going to read the verse I was looking, but it is uh, Acts uh, 18. I read the uh, chapter of 18, uh, moving down up to, up to 10, at your own time. Uh, lastly, there's uh, a section where uh, we meet Lydia again. Uh, Lydia inviting Paul to come to our home. 
uh, uh, the uh, book is Acts 16, 11 to 15, moving out to 40. But what I want us to borrow from that basis of the small group is when it is practiced from there. And you will find, my uh, uh, elder, that when we have small groups in home, home like now we have COVID, people have home Sabbath, yeah. it forms very nice, uh, forms. very nice uh, uh, small groups. Small groups within the family. You bring your family together and you learn together about God, you pray together. It's a very powerful small group. Your neighbors, those who are around you, your friends who are living with a close uh, uh, area, you can have even prayer, 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 uh, prayer, prayer groups, cells, yeah, prayer, prayer cells and so on, yeah. and prayer bands. Even if you're living in the hostels, what when you are you pande what when fumbiro they are pande pande So you you you, you, <laughs> you form these these groups and yeah. you pray, you pray uh, together. together. You know it it will form like a home, a little heaven. Yeah. You know a small group is just like a, a little. It makes you experience that emotional support. You know, my elder, there's something that we get only in small groups. One sure. of them is emotional, emotional, emotional support. support, spiritual support. Spiritual. People grow in in this small uh, uh, small group. You can also you have stress, a lot of stress. You can find a true friend in the yeah, small group. You share with them, yeah. and uh, through that, you always say that we bear the burdens of one another. We there is this song that uh, uh, we used to sing in uh, in in high school. I don't know if, if it was primary that we uh, we are happy. Uh, we are happy to share the, the burdens of one another. And so, uh, one of the things, just as Elder you are saying, that the small groups become a nice opportunity to make friendship. And you know, these are not just friendships. They are long-lasting friendships. Friends that you will meet one day somewhere and will support you to gain something, will support you to get something that will be so nice for uh, your uh, livelihood and also for your external Life. Apart from that, let us learn some good examples from the Bible. And we're talking about uh, the dynamics that we have there in small groups. So God, number one, has used the small groups to grow the church. The first example is the early church. The early church was not the model that we have today. It was some, a small group model. People used to meet in groups, in groups and worship God. And after they had done that, they would visit one another in homes break the bread, and share the word of God, and they could also pray together. So that is how this, the early church began growing. And once it grew, and the, once people saw the benefit of this, they uh, came together, and they grew a large church that now uh, had to worship together. Number two, uh, the, 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 as we are talking about uh, this small group, our key goal of forming this is that it should lead us to Jesus Christ. Uh, although we may have different dynamics, some unite for different dynamics, but our key goal should be to help one another. So what do we do when we meet in our small groups? What do we do when we come together as a people? Number one, let us intercede for one another in these small groups. Let us pray for one another. When we do this, we shall be strengthened. You remember the example of Paul and Silas. They prayed together in the jail, and that one shaped uh, the the jails and the doors uh, 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 flew open, and they were they uh, they were uh, they found themselves free. Number two, we meet together to pray for common concerns. You may you may be having a problem, elder. When we when you share it to me, and uh, I bear the burden, and we pray together, we'll be relieved, and you sh you, you you will surely uh, come to to, uh, to to appreciate the gift of friendship. Uh, number three. Uh, it will uh, uh, be a nice opportunity to, uh, for us to spend quality time together. Uh, in uh, one of these uh, famous writers' book, he talks about the five languages of love. Someone, uh, the language of love of someone is spending quality time together. Yeah, yeah. You know, the language of love of God is also quality time. Yeah. God requires quality time. God is from a jealous God. He is a jealous God. He requires quality time. And God requires us uh, to have quality time with Him. Yeah. That quality time will only be uh, uh, be uh, possible if we, as His children, we have learned. And this small group will be a place for you to get trained on how you should study the Scripture, on how you should move from a chapter to a chapter, a book to a book, and finally get to read the whole Bible. And also, it will be an uh, opportunity for you to learn how to uh, to to pray. And next. Uh, this small group 
will be a wonderful opportunity for you to be trained unto the service of God. The service uh, is so vast, and uh, if we are poorly trained, then the work will not proceed as we as we uh, should take it. We were singing the song, Oh, We Are at the Rivers. You will, you, you will realize the songwriter is saying that uh, if we delay uh, for the harvest, then many will be lost. We have to train ourselves for the service. In the small group, there is somebody who is good in prophecy. There is somebody who is good in delivering health message. There is another person who is good in Bible study. But there is that person who is good in keeping silent. And that person will come to learn and to know how to do yeah. these things. And then, uh, you will, in so doing, you will learn how to share the gospel. And one of the good things that uh, uh, James writes about is that uh, the gospel that we need to take is uh, visiting the widows, visiting the orphans, and breaking bread with them. In a small group, it will be a wonderful opportunity for us to learn community service. And in so doing, we will be Christians who are all round. In high school, it was so wonderful thing to be an all round student. God also requires us to be all round Christian so that at any particular time, we be ready to give evidences for our faith. And lastly, uh, the, the, the small group, the, the reason why we are talking about this is for the Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 command. Go ye therefore and make disciples. The small group is a wonderful basis for making disciples. And as we are talking about making friends, the small group will be an opportunity for us to participate in missionary work. Uh, sharing Christ, revealing Christ, and calling people unto them. One man says that uh, maybe you cannot do anything to one person, but there is one thing that you can do, bringing that person to Christ, and Christ will transform him, transform her, and that person will be able to reflect Christ. And that is basically, uh, Elder, what we are talking yeah. about, the small group dynamics. Maybe if we read a verse, even as we come to the, to the close, Matthew, Acts chapter 12, verse 12. Uh, so when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And that is one key thing. All, everything that uh, for, for our own success, we need prayer. The small group will be an opportunity for us to nurture and to develop our prayer life. Thank you so much, Elder. Uh, 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 even as, as we now come to an end of this uh, wonderful uh, wonderful study, Elder, it goes to a church, uh, a KU, we have almost uh, 3,000 uh, members in the book. For those who come to church, there is around 1,000 plus. Uh, and we also have we... YouTube members. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and do you know, among these 1,000 plus that come to church daily, there's one person who comes to church in the morning, and goes back without even meeting one, one, one sure, person. Very true. And the person doesn't even have a friend in the church. Very true. In, in spite of us uh, being a church that we said we are three, 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 three thousand, how the, what does this one call to us, even us today? We as the leaders of the church, we as those who have seen the benefit of small group, how can we dare do this, that our members come to church and go without meeting a, 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 a person? The best way we can approach this is creating more the small groups. Elder, you have been a champion of small groups in Kusta. You, I knew you as a person that, you know, this discipleship and this, this is, your, small is your passion. Could you share with us an experience, just in one minute, of, of your experience of small group in, 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 in Kusta? Uh, thank, in thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Elder. Uh, in fact, when I came to campus, uh, that is in 2018, I used to hear about small groups and to, uh, to hear uh, one of the elders then, that was Elder John Irina talking about small groups. And uh, I never knew what it was. I never knew how important it was. But today, I can say that I am a, a product. I'm not a byproduct. I am <laughs> a product of small groups. Uh, small group ministry has enabled me to grow spiritually. It has enabled me to know how to uh, 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 manage myself in day-to-day -day activities. You know, in sometimes you come, to, you befriend somebody in a small group, and you see how this person carries out himself, how this person manages his day-to-day -day schedule, and it inspires you. I have got, I have been inspired by this, and I, in, 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 in through that, I have been able to change my lifestyle to fit that person's lifestyle 
who God brought to me just as a wonderful gift to me. And besides that, a small group has enabled me to nurture my prayer life. Small groups has enabled me to uh, take missionary work seriously just as Christ requires me to do. So if there is somebody there still deliberating or thinking on what to do, I want to tell you there is only one thing that you need to do. You need to find a friend somewhere. You need to find someone somewhere to form a small group. You may never know what you are going to do there, but God does not call those who are qualified or those who know what they are going to do. God calls those who doesn't know what to do so that he may teach them, so that they may become meek and learn of him. And in so doing, they will have more success than even those who talk, think they know this. So you are there, you are listening to this. Please join a small group. Please take this message seriously so that together we may work uh, for the harvest time is soon here with us. Thank you so much. They say God calls them, qualify and qualifies them. Yeah. You don't, need to, don't, don't worry. To, to qualify. In fact, don't, you can never qualify yourself. God will call you the way you are. Yeah. And God will qualify you. And God will make you a great professor. You cannot say that you are such worse than Paul when when, when he was still called Saul. Yeah. You can not say that you are, you are worse than some of the icons that we have or we read about in the, in the, in the uh, Bible. Lastly, Elder, yeah. there's this great commission that God gives unto us in the Matthew 28. Yeah. Uh, the verse is... Uh, uh, 18, yeah. uh, moving to 19 and up to up to 20. Yeah. And it records uh, that um, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples. Yeah. Understand this commission. Go therefore and make the disciples. Did, they go, did Christ say go there and preach to them? <laughs> he told them, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Of all nations. The key word there is disciple. Who is a disciple? A disciple is someone who have been, have been trained and is being is, is able to carry the information that you have been are being taught and spread it again yeah. uh, to uh, 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 somewhere. In so fact, someone yes. says that a disciple is somebody who follows a school of thought. Christ is telling them that go ye therefore and teach them that which I have taught you. Christ couldn't have sent them without teaching them. Yeah. And therefore Christ has taught us. He has given us the Bible. The same same burden somebody felt in winning you to Christ is the same same burden you should feel uh, for that soul that have not yet known Christ. That we may go to them and teach them just as Christ has commanded us. Thank you so much. Yeah. Winning a soul only is not enough. Yeah. Winning a soul and making that soul a disciple to win someone else, that's the goal. And that's the goal of Seventh Day Adventist Church. And that is the goal for all of us, you and me and every person. That let's make disciples. Let's not win souls and live there. When win souls and live there, most of the time they backslide and go back to comfort zone. But if you make a disciple, you save a world, you save a family, you save a community, you save a village. Elder, sure. This there's, this time has cut up short, but there's uh, a lot last of things to say. <laughs> uh, one of the key goals of uh, the Adventist Church, or the main mission of the Adventist Church, is to make disciples who in themselves are disciple makers. Once we do this, we shall have accomplished the mission work that Christ left us with. And brethren, there is no better avenue that we can achieve this apart from the small groups. This is the only way that we'll be able to make friends for God. Let us listen to the words of uh, the song, Hark the Voice of Jesus Calling, stanza one only, and the last stanza, and then we shall to bring this to a close. Hark the voice of Jesus calling Who will go and work today Fields are wide, the harvest waiting who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and long the master calleth, richly what he offers me. Who will answer gladly saying, Here am I, O Lord, send me. 
Ghosts of men are dying, and the master calls for you. Let none hear you idly saying, There is nothing I can do. Gladly take the task he gives you. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he calleth. Here am I, O Lord, send me. Answer quickly when he calleth. Here am I, O Lord, send me. Let's pray. Our dear everlasting Lord, indeed, Father, today you have revealed to us that the great commission that you left for us is to make disciples, to teach the words that they can teach others so that your word can reach all the four corners of this globe. How I pray, dear Lord, that you can make us, uh, give us, can give us the strength, dear Lord, to carry out this work with you to the latter, Father. Be with us today, even as we commune with you this through the Sabbath until the end. For this, my prayer, Jesus Christ, I pray, trust you and believe in. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory.